In this video, we're gonna look at two different sanders from Festool. I'm gonna share with you my experience, what I'd recommend for purchasing, uh, the pros and cons of these two sanders, and what I would do differently if I could go back in time and re-spend the money that I've spent over the years on sanders. First thing we want to look at, and it was something that I didn't understand a decade ago as I transitioned from purchasing box store orbital sanders to higher end sanders from companies like Festool was stroke length. Stroke length is really important because that is going to determine how aggressive the orbital action of your sander is. Obviously, the more stroke length you have, the more potential you have for swirl marks in your finish. So for a very fine finish application, you're gonna want a shorter stroke length. For me, I prefer the five millimeter stroke length, which is more aggressive, gets the job done a lot faster, um, just works really well for me. The first sander I purchased from Festool many years ago, it was one of their cheaper sanders and it had a very very short stroke length made it extremely slow to use then i purchased one of these ets it was the 125 sander so the five inch version with a three millimeter stroke length it was better but still drastically slower as compared to an ets ec 150 slash five which is going to be a six inch sander with a five millimeter stroke. So this is the sander that I use 99% of the time and I absolutely love it. I keep an ETS 150 slash five in the shop as well as on my van for on-site work. Whenever I'm trimming houses on site, I always have a vacuum right beside my miter saw with one of these sanders hooked up. It's great for getting chatter marks and scratches um, off of poplar, which is primarily what I use. It's very versatile for that. If you're making face frames for cabinetry, usually I'm doing built-ins out of poplar. This handles face frames really well. It's aggressive enough to quickly flatten out those joints, but not too aggressive. There is an upgrade that I suggest you make to your Festool sanders, and I've done to both of these sanders, and that is to get the hard pad from Festool. And the hard pad is going to make your face frames much more crisp. It's gonna reduce any digging in to edges and things like that. Uh, and it, it just works a lot better for almost all the applications I use it for. So the first thing I do is buy an extra hard pad and switch that out for the pad that comes with the sander. When you think about the hard pads on these sanders, if you can think of trying to sand a face frame by hand with just your fingers and a piece of sandpaper, it's gonna dig in because of the softness of your fingertips. It's gonna be very inconsistent. And on your edges, it's gonna to wanna to round those over. Whenever you switch to a hard pad, you're using what is much more like a sanding block. And it's gonna conform to the flatness of that board and keep your edges much more crisp, keep your face frame joints or wainscot joints, whatever it may be, it's gonna keep that much more flat. So I highly recommend putting hard pads on your sanders. So again, I use the ETS EC 150 with a five millimeter stroke 99% of the time. It's my go-to sander. I love it. It's smooth, it's easy on the hands. It's all those things, however, it does have its limitations. And the reason I am shooting this video right now is because I ran up against one of those limitations for this sander today. And I wanted to highlight that in this video and show you where a Rotex sander will really shine for you. What I've got right here is a bunch of white oak stair treads. And as you can see on the end, I have a mitered return on both ends of these stair treads. What I had to do was glue a piece of return onto the end of these treads. So as you know, if you've ever worked with white oak, it's an extremely hard material to sand. It's very dense. What you don't see in my shop is a big wide belt sander, which would be ideal 
to just send all these stair treads through. Unfortunately, I don't have that. Now for me to use this 150 slash five, the ETS sander, it would take a lot, it would take a long time um, and it just wouldn't be very aggressive. The other thing in this shop on these blanks, they haven't been sanded either. So with a helical head on my planer, I get a pretty nice finish, but it still needs a good sanding for me to achieve a really nice stain finish. That's where the Rotex comes in. This little sander can do the work of a wide belt sander. It is so aggressive. Um, and the action of the Rotex action is just incredible in its ability to really get the job done fast, but yet not really screw up your work. So on white oak like this, that is where a Rotex sander like this is gonna shine. The Rotex sander has a standard orbital action, and I'm not even sure exactly what the stroke length is on that standard orbital action, but the real key feature is the Rotex action, and that's taking the, the orbital action and putting a little bit more spin on it so it acts more like a belt sander, but yet it's completely different from a belt sander. So it's like getting the aggression of a belt sander, but still using the orbital action. So it's fantastic. What would take me forever with this sander, the Rotex really knocks out fast. So I really wanted to highlight that as I get started sanding down these stair treads, um, this Rotex is, gonna, is just a lifesaver in this situation. It's not a sander that I reach for very often simply because of what my workflow is, um, but in situations like this, it's priceless in the shop. Now, the one big mistake I made is I started purchasing sanders, again, going back a decade, I started out purchasing five inch sanders. And that was a big mistake. I highly recommend, unless you've really got a reason to go with five inch, the six inch is gonna get the job done way faster. I sold my five inch sanders. Um, this here is the six inch. And as you can see, this is a Rotex five inch. So it's a RO125. I really wish I would have got the RO150, which would have been the six inch sander. I'm still tempted to buy it. But again, I don't use it all that often, um, but the six inch just, it really does make a huge difference on how fast you get the job done. Now you might think, well, if the Rotex has the orbital action and the Rotex action, I'll just get this sander and I'll have the best of both worlds. You could certainly do that. The big downfall of the Rotex sander is the balance. Um, because of the way it's built in order to have that Rotex action, obviously it's bigger and longer and that affects the balance of the sander. The other thing is vibration. Whenever you're in Rotex mode, it, it, it just does something to your hands. It's just a lot more aggressive. Your hands have to be very engaged with the sander in order to keep it flat, again, because of the balance issues. With the ETS sanders, you can pretty much just set them down on the surface and they, they just stay right where they're supposed to. But whenever you go from using this sander for a while and then pick up this one and use it, it's crazy how different they feel and how much better the ETS feels. So uh, again, 99% of my sanding is done with this sander and uh, this, this would not be fun to use all the time. I just use it whenever I need that Rotex action. One other key point is what grit of sandpaper do you want to use with these sanders? Just from my personal experience, I use 120 grit almost all the time. 99.9% .9 of the time I use 120 grit and that works great. It's aggressive enough to get out planar chatter, scratches, gouges, but still even on a stain grade poplar beam or something like that, it doesn't leave big ugly swirl marks in my opinion. So 120 is the grit that I use most often. I'm gonna be sanding these stair treads here and I have 120 grit on the Rotex as well as the ETS and that seems to work pretty good for me. So I hope you found this video helpful to make, help you make a purchase decision again 
Hard pads on the sander are fantastic, keeps things nice and flat. Look at the stroke length of your orbital sanders before you purchase. Uh, unless you've got a reason to go with a shorter stroke length, a longer stroke length is probably gonna be better for you. It's gonna get the job done faster and be more aggressive. Five millimeter stroke with a hard pad, six inch sander, it's absolutely fantastic. If you're gonna go Rotex, consider going the six inch unless you really think you need the smaller version. Wish I would have got the six inch. Also on the Rotex, again, because it is so aggressive, if you don't have the hard pad on it, you're gonna be prone to having issues with it wanting to dig in and maybe not keep your material flat. So put the hard pad on the Rotex also. So these Rotex sanders are super handy. Um, again, many times on site, I've had weird situations where they've been great in the shop like this. It allows me to do a job, whereas a lot of larger shops would have a big wide belt sander. A little guy like me with a small shop can tackle a project like this, um, sanding down these oak treads somewhat efficiently coming right off the planer um, can still get a great finish. So I'm gonna hit all of these with the Rotex and then I'll just do a light pass over the top with the 150 slash five, the ETS, and they're right on the money. One of the key things you lose with the Rotex sanders is the ability to sand one-handed. The balance just isn't there, and obviously, especially in Rotex mode, it's just not possible to use that sander without both hands on it. So here I've got my ETS sander, and I do need to hit my, my ends of the board, and the ETS is gonna be much better for that. It's way better balanced, a lot smoother. So that's just pretty effortless with the ETS. You can just see some of the, the minor yet big differences between these two sanders.